this triangle is missing two angles and the side in between, which is going to be side A, we're going to use the law of cosines to solve this one. We're also going to use the law of sines and the fact that the sum of the triangles is equal to 180, but first we're going to need that law of cosines. You'll notice that we've got a side 15, which is side C, and we've got an angle 58 degrees followed by that side B. So this is a side angle side case. Now the law of cosines comes in three different forms, but they really are all the Pythagorean theorem with this fudge factor here. Now for ours, we need to solve for side A, angle B, and angle C. So the easiest one to use is going to be the one that starts with A squared, and that's going to solve A for us. So we have got A squared is equal to B squared, but side B is 19, so B squared plus C squared, which is 15, um, minus, I'm going to put this just right below, minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of angle A, which is 58 degrees. Now, I've got this almost solved for A. I'm going to just take a square root. If I take a square root on this side, I get A by itself. And I've got a square root on this side as well. I'm going to go ahead and put all of this into my calculator and we'll have side A. So first thing I need to do in my calculator is to make sure that I'm in degrees since that's my angle measure. So I'm going to go to mode and then arrowing down to radians and degrees. I need degrees. So I arrow over to highlight and then enter to choose. I'm going to go ahead and quit here and I'm ready for my square root. So I'm going to go second of the x squared key and then let's type all of this in. 19, I'm going to use my squared key plus 15 squared minus 2 times 19 times 15, it's a long formula, but man, it is worth it, times the cosine of 58 degrees, and this is going to give me side A. Let's keep one decimal place. So side A is 16.85. Let's go ahead and call that 16.9. So I've got side A is 16.9. Now, next I've got these angles, angles B and C to solve for. I could use the law of cosines again, but it's going to be a mess because those angles are inside of that formula inside of the cosine. The law of sines is going to be a much, much easier way to go. And you'll notice that in the law of sines, I want to pick up what I've got the most information for, and I definitely have the most information for this first fraction. I've got the sine of A and I've got side A. So I've got that one. Doesn't matter which one you pick up next. Let's go ahead and do the sine of B over B. So putting this one together, I've got the sine of A, so the sine of 58 degrees divided by side A, which we just solved for, 16.9, is equal to the sine of B, I do not have angle B, divided by side B, and side B is 19. Let me move some of this up out of the way, and let's continue solving. I'm going to do a cross multiplication here. So cross multiplying, I get 16.9 times the sine of B is equal to 19 times the sine of 58. A couple more steps here. I need to divide both sides by 16.9, divide by 16.9, and that gives me the sine of B. Um, is equal to this, but what I really need is angle B. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a sine inverse here. So I'm going to apply the sine inverse to this side and to all of this. So to all of this. Okay, so what does that leave me with? This leaves me with angle B. Now sine inverse will only give me an acute angle between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. And that's okay, that's gonna work out here. So I get angle B is equal to sine inverse of all of this stuff. 19 sine 58 
all divided by 16.9. Okay, now that I've got that down, I can go ahead and put it into my calculator. So into my calculator, I'm gonna type sine inverse, so that's the second of sine, and then inside those parentheses, I've got 19 times the sine of 58 degrees. Let's close the parentheses for the 58 degrees, and then divided by 16.9, close my parentheses, enter, and I get 72.44. So let's go ahead and say that angle B is approximately 72.44, we'll call that 72.4 degrees. Now, where does this leave us? It actually leaves us almost finished. So I've got angle B now, 72.4. How would you solve for that last missing piece, that last angle? Do you know? It's our last tool. And our last tool here is the fact that the sum of all of those angles is 180 degrees. Let me grab a different color pen here. We are looking for angle C and I'll put an angle there in front. So angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus the angles that we know. So that's gonna be minus 58, minus 72.4. So in my calculator, 180 minus 58, minus 72.4, and we've got that last angle, and angle C is 49.6 degrees. You guys are doing fantastic. I've got some other videos here on solving triangles. Thanks so much for watching.